enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Let us glorify him this morning. Let us lift him up. Let us sing unto his holy name. Thank you, Father God. Our Father which are in heaven. Thank you for this day, Father God. Thank you for grace and mercy today. Thank you for never leaving nor forsaking us today. Thank you for waking each and every one of us up today. Clothing our right minds with the activity of our limbs, Father God. We just thank you because you are our support. You are our supplier. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our sanctifier. You are everything that we need. You are the great I am. You are Alpha Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And we just thank you for who you are, Father God. We just honor your presence in here today. Let your word go forth today. Ask that you text the man of God that's bringing your word today. Catch our pastor this morning. Catch him from the very crown of his head to the very sole of his feet, Lord. And let your word just reign in this place. Let it reign all over, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks to the Most High God. Are you all loving Jesus on this morning? Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it according to Psalms 118 and 24. We are so grateful for you all allowing us to come into your home by way of life. Screaming, I am beloved First Lady Lola Lewis of Rhema Word Christian Outreach Ministry, and I'm here to do the canopy of our protection, which you will find in Psalms 91, verses 1 through 16. Verse 1, for he that dwelleth in the, the secret, secret place of the, of the Most, Most High, High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the fire and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall I trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come out thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall have trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Therefore, I get in the room with you. Give him a bump in, point at him, and tell him that's the canopy of our protection. Amen. Amen. So before our man of God come forth, we're going to share with you our declaration of the word. And it goes like this. The word of God is my source of power. It is my light and my darkest hour. We will speak his word every day, declaring the victory in every way. He has made us the head and not the tail. 
the gates of hell shall not prevail. We are more than a conqueror and we can't be beat. We're standing on top with all things under our feet. We will prosper in everything in Christ. We walk by faith and not by sight. Every door of utterance and promise to me, I will stagger not through unbelief. In words or deeds, I can do all things when I speak them boldly in Jesus' name. Every day I declare to be a prosperous one because I have the Father and the Son. Destroying Satan works in the power of sin. We are speaking life into the lives of men. Amen. If you believe that, say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to introduce to some and present to others our most holy man of God, our under shepherd, and our lead sheep, Pastor Dr. Willis O. Lewis. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. Good morning, saints of the Most High God. Good morning. It is once again a pleasure and a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. Regardless of, regardless of what, whatever is going on in the world, we know that God is still in control. Amen. He's not controlling everything, but he is in control of everything. And that is our great God. Knowing that we don't have to worry about anything, but we can just pray about everything. According to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, the scripture tells us, to be careful for nothing. That little phrase alone means don't worry. Amen. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So that tells us that all we have to do is pray about everything. Prayer is the indispensable weapon that every believer has. Every believer has the, uh, the, the, the prayer, the, the weapon of prayer. The Bible tells us that God, he hears the prayers of the righteous, but he is far from the wicked. The scripture also let us know that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And this is one of the things that we don't do all the time. We use it as plan B and never plan A. And what do I mean by that? And what some people do say, well, since all of it has failed and everything else has failed, I guess I'll pray now. No, you should always pray. You should have prayed from the beginning. I don't care if I'm going to the hospital and have surgery. I'm going to pray first. That God will guide and direct the hands and the heart of those surgeons and everyone that's working in that hospital. And before I do anything, I'm going to pray first. I'm going to ask God for his guidance and for his protection. And that he will be with us and never leave us nor forsake us. You know, because if we don't seek God first and put him first, you know, when things do go wrong, then what will, what will we do? And even as I shared with you before, the level of a man's maturity is based upon the level of a man's ability. Number one is to hear from God. Number two is to trust God when things go wrong. Amen. But e even when things start going wrong, you still got to trust God, but you got to pray. Right. Been in the military for 24 years, and, I have, and I'm grateful the Lord had took me in the military and carried me 24 years and uh, I'm retired now from the military, from the United States Army. One of the things that I've always learned is that it was during peacetime that we prepare for war. Yes. Right. We didn't prepare for war while we was going to war or while we was in battle. During peacetime, that's when we did our training. That's when we learned all our common tasks. That's when we went to the field to test our equipment. That's when we uh, begin to go to the rifle range to ensure that we know how to effectively use our M16, the weapon, and also our protective gear for our protective masks and our NBC clothing to make sure if we came under an NBC attack, 
we are ready and prepared to defend ourselves and to protect ourselves. Why do I say all of that? Is because if you are a prayer, and what I mean is a person who prays all the time, and I say that by practitioner, ER means prayer, and you're a practitioner, you are the one that prays all the time. If you pray now, during peacetime, while everything is hunky-dory, while your refrigerator is full, while you've got money in your bank account, while things are going well, so when things do go wrong, you don't have to be afraid. You won't have to worry. You know why? Because you already in prayer with the Father. Amen. You've already been talking to the Father. Amen. And see, what some people do, they wait until they get in trouble and start praying. But the scripture tells us in Luke's gospel, chapter 18, verse 1, that men are always to pray and not to faint. The Bible tells the first Thessalonians to, to pray without ceasing. We should always pray. And if you really want to know the strength of any ministry, and pastor, if you want to know the strength of your church, call a prayer meeting and see how many people will come. But I guarantee you, you call the prayer meeting, you won't get that many. But if you say, hey, let's have a, 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 let's have a feast. Let's have a, a, a family day where everybody bring food. You'll have everybody showing up then. They'll bring the neighbors and everybody. But that goes to show you how we do not take prayer seriously. You know why? Because we think that God won't do anything and we won't put our faith in him. We've got to trust God no matter what we go through in life. Because He either he is or he ain't. And I know you all have heard me say this before. The scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. In other words, you must believe that he does exist. He is alive. He is the true and living God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the creator of everything and all the inhabitants of this earth. And that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that's why I say you need to believe that he is or he ain't. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've been serving the Lord now 40 years. And, and, and with, with every day, me serving the Lord, I don't regret not one day. Not one day I regret serving the Lord. And I say that because I find God to be real in my life. And if he wasn't real, I think I would, by the time, I would have found something else to do. I would have revert back to my old sinful ways. But I'm just grateful to know that God is real. Amen. I couldn't change myself. Amen. You Amen. as a saint of God couldn't change yourself. It took, it took a greater power to change us. The scripture tells us in, in John's gospel, chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, that I'll do. Amen. And see, we got to understand God chose us. Amen. He called us. He ordained us. He appointed us. He anointed us to do what? To go and preach the gospel. Why would I just start preaching from a book and I don't have, I have no knowledge of who God is? I don't know. Why, why, why should I preach from a book? Why should I just begin to talk about God? I've never seen God. But see, that's where faith kicks in. The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, this is where faith gets in because, see, the Bible said, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So now, because God called me, and the way he called me is when I heard his word. He spoke his word to my heart, to my spirit. I answered the call. I repented of my sins. I gave my life to the Lord. I accepted Jesus as Savior Lord of my life. And now I begin to follow him and begin to serve him. And I find no fault in him at all. That's why I'm still in this race. I'm not just trying to play a safe. I know I'm already saved. According to our canopy of protection, Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. 
The scripture tells us some folks trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. And the righteous run into it and they are saved. Amen. And so I'm not playing to say I am saved. Amen. And I am saved. Amen. Not only I'm saved, but I am saved. I mean, in this game of baseball, you know, the umpire, he, he can, we can watch every, everywhere I touch him, every base that I touch. I'm going to touch first base. After I hit that ball, I'm going to touch first base. I'm going to touch second base. I'm going to touch third base. And then if I have to run and try to slide in home, I'm going to get there before the ball get there. And then, the, you know, the umpire is going to have to call me safe. You know why? Because I know I am safe in him. Amen. And I don't have to worry about anything. And you know what? One thing about me and about all of us, we don't have to worry about sliding into heaven. Come on. Because right. if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right. you ain't got right. to slide. Come on. You can just go right on me and just glide right on me. Come on. Because when it's all said and done, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's what it's all about. It's all about him. I just want to take this time and just to encourage someone's heart, uh, uh, someone heart, I should say, or just encourage your heart, just to continue to trust God, continue to keep your faith in him, continue to believe that he is God. And besides me, there is no other. And you know, uh, people, I'm not going back. And if I'm going to hell, I'm not going to hell with no Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I'm gonna go in a limousine or, or an airplane. That's if I'm planning on going to hell. But there, but I'm not planning on going to hell. Uh, you know, I'm going to heaven. Come on. Yes, sir. You right. know, for me to live as Christ, die is to gain. And so, people of God, trust the living God. Trust God. You probably say, I've never seen God. No one has seen God. The scripture tells us in John 1 and 18 and 1 John 4 and 12, no man has seen God at any time. So since we haven't seen him, what we have to do is believe. Like he told down in Thomas, he said, Thomas, the only reason why you believe me is because you've seen me. But blessed are they that believe and have not yet seen me. It's blessed. It's a greater blessing for us to trust in the living God. And we've never seen him. And that's what made this life, this Christian life so great. Because we trusted him by faith. And when we pray, we begin to see our prayers begin to come from the abstract to the concrete, begin to manifest itself right before us. That's only if we trust in him. Amen. 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 And so you all continue to be encouraged. You continue to move forward in him because it's all about him. And remember this, the only direction that God has given us is forward. And see, the scripture tells us, and I do believe in Psalm 46 and 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. The only reason why you have to be still so you can receive the instructions, yeah. so you can get the order, so you can get the command. And once you do that, then you got to do what? Go forward. The apostle Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing that I do, forgetting those things that are behind me, and I reach forth to those things that are before me. I press towards the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. Because it's all about him. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 to 58. It says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Amen. Lord. For as much as you know. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about overcoming the spirit of fear. Overcoming the spirit of fear. You can turn your Bibles with me. Those of you who are watching uh, this um, live streaming this morning. And we want to say thank you to all our Raymond family and to all our friends and all, to, uh, all our saints and brothers and sisters in the gospel and those of you who are watching and even as uh, each and every one of you are sharing this uh, live streaming this morning, I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Amen. Amen. And thank you for allowing us to come into your homes on this morning through live streaming this morning. And here it is today, it's Sunday, March 29, 2020. 
Here we are now at the, almost at the end of this month of March. And God has kept us this far Amen. through this new year of 2020. You know, when I think about the 2020, I think about uh, normal vision or perfect vision. You know, 2020 is considered to be normal vision, meaning that your, your sight, your, your, far, uh, your, your far sight is good, your near sight is good, everything is good. And I know people would get deep, holy religion and spiritual and say, well, I got 2015 vision. Well, if you got it, God bless you. But I want to say this, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, I call this our perfect vision scripture. And I've been saying this for years. And I remember when we uh, had started the ministry way back in the rec center, right back in 1997, when we actually started the ministry, even when we had started the ministry in our home, I would say this to the saints of God. I said, 2 Chronicles 20 and 20, that's our perfect vision scripture. And the latter part of that scripture, it says, believe in the Lord thy God, so shall, the, so shall you be established, and believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. In other words, we got to believe in God to be established in him, because that's where everything starts. Everything starts with him. But it's very important that you believe the prophet or the man of God, your pastor, whoever is bringing forth the word of God. It is important for you to believe the man of God. And let me go on record and say this. Preachers, pastors, apostles, fivefold ministries, listen to me. It doesn't do us any good by preaching the word and if we don't believe it ourselves. Because, see, you can be a believer and still not believe the word of God. Oh, man, I'm getting ahead of myself right now. But I, I, but I do feel like, Mr. Roger, I do feel like I'm coming down your neighborhood. Because, see, it's important for us. See, I would be a fool to sit here and preach this word and then not believe it myself. See, we try to preach and get everybody else right. But when I preach this word, I want this word to change me, to change me first. If I don't feel any conviction, I don't even want to preach it. Because, see, the Word got to speak to me and the Holy Spirit got to speak to me. He must certify this Word. That's when He begins to anoint this Word. And so when the Word of God goes forth, it goes forth in the anointing and in the power of the Holy Ghost with much assurance. Amen. And so, people of God, as we preach this Word, I'm like Paul. Paul said, I don't want to be like one who just shadow boxing. I don't want to be the one as I can preach to others and I myself become a castaway or be disqualified from the race. Come on. I don't want to be disqualified after I done trained everybody and got everybody else all into heaven and got everybody else believing the word. I must believe this word myself as a preacher. Yes, sir. And it's important for us to believe this word Amen. and accept this word as God's inspired word of God. Amen. Amen. God breathed on every scripture from Genesis to Revelation. We must understand that. Amen. Let's get into the scripture and just give me a few more minutes. I want to talk to you today about overcoming the spirit of fear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 5 through 7. 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 5 through 7. And, I, for, and for all of you who love the word of God, I, I, I trust that you got your Bibles. Read along with me. Uh, I want you to, to always be able to uh, understand what the word of God is saying. The Bible said there are many false prophets that are going out there. There are many people that are out there in the world that will just tell you what they want you to know or tell you what they want you to hear just to get your money. I don't preach for money. I preach because I'm called to do this work. I know my assignment because I know God is able to supply all my needs, wants, and desires according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting verse 5, and uh, the Apostle Paul began to speak to Timothy, one of his young sons in the faith, whom he had called and chosen to work with him. It says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, that's the genuine faith that is in thee. And your Bible should say the same thing. Your Bible says that as well, correct? Amen. It says, which dealt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. He's talking about the genuine faith that's in 
and thus in Timothy. In verse 6, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Verse 7, and this is what we, where we're taking our text. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of this holy word. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me just give you a little background, first of all, about uh, Timothy's mother. In Acts chapter 16, verse 1 through 3, uh, the Apostle Paul, even as he was here, he was saying, Then came he to uh, De uh, Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple there was there named Timothus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed. But his father was a Greek. And this is the same Timothy that we're talking about right now, whom Paul was telling that God has not given us the spirit of fear. And he was telling, he said, now I know your mother and I know your grandmother, your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. He said, I know that the faith that they had. And here we see um, um, Timothy's mother. She was a Jewish and she believed, but his father was a Greek. So he was of a mixed multitude or a mixed race of people. That's why Paul had to take him and circumcise and convert him to Judaism. But let me read on. And verse 2 says, uh, Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him. So Paul takes him with him and took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. So that's why Paul took him and circumcised him. So that way, people, the, the other Jews that was there in that area, they could not have any qualms or anything against Paul by him taking this man who was uh, part Jew and part Greek and take him with him to do the work of God. But I brought this out to show you that he was talking about the faith that, that was in his mother, and now it was also in his grandmother, but he said, now this same genuine faith is in you. And the reason why Paul focused on his faith, because of the uh, opposition that he knew that, that Timothy was going to face, dealing with believers and unbelievers. And he did not want anything to hinder him from moving forward in the ministry that God has given him. So he said, now, but God has not given you the spirit of fear. And see, notice what he said, the spirit of fear. And it's the difference between the spirit of fear and the emotion of fear. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And so understand here that Timothy's mother was a woman of faith. She was a believer. And see, you can be a believer and not believe the word of God. And that's why it's important that if we are believers, we got to learn how to believe and accept God's word as being God's word. Right. So believe the word. And here's another thing. See, people say, oh, I just love, um, I love the word of God. But you also got to love the God of this word. Amen. You must love the God of this word. Because some people get caught up in just the knowledge of the word. Yes. And obtaining uh, this knowledge and this information. But they won't get caught up in God. Right, That's why we need to know him. That's why Paul said, now I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. We need to know who God is and we come to know him through his word. But my point is, don't just get caught up in the knowledge and get caught up in the letter of the word. But you need to get caught up in the spirit. Amen. Because see, the Amen. letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. Come on. That's why it's so important that we get to know who he is. And we know who and we get to know him by the Holy Spirit and through the word of God. And so now as Paul begins to focus on uh, Timothy's faith, because he knows that faith, having faith and having courage, it'll help overcome that fear that he has. He, here's Timothy being a young man and Paul helping him to establish 
their church and how to get things in order. Even he tells them how to look for the qualified men who would be deacons, who would be leaders in the church, even their wives' qualification. He looks at all of this, but he tells them, he said, now look here, Timothy. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when we talk about overcoming fear, the word overcoming or to overcome, that means to get the better of. Mm -hmm. It means to prevail over. It also means to control and get control of. Get or bring under control. And to overcome, it means to succeed in, the, in dealing with problems or difficulties. It means to defeat, that's if you defeat an opponent. And see, it is not the situation or the circumstance that we are trying to control, but our emotions, not to fear or to allow the spirit of fear to control our emotion. We all know what's happening right now in the world. This coronavirus, this pandemic, not just an epidemic, this thing is a pandemic. And we know this thing now has, has paralyzed the world. It has immobilized the world, it has impaired the world. And it has stopped vehicles from transporting uh, goods from, from the factories to the stores. A lot of things are happening. And you know, it caused now this thing has struck fear in the hearts of people. To the point now where this thing is, is causing people to die. And people have died from this coronavirus. And see, but what we got to understand is that we can't control that situation. Yes, nor can we control the circumstance. But what we really need to control is our emotions. Yes, of fear and understand that God did not give us the spirit of fear. Amen. See, if we had the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear would control us as if a spirit was possessing a body. But the emotion of fear, God has given us that because it's like this. If I see a lion, I'm not going to walk out there and try to quote Psalms 91 and say, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. No, I'm not going to do that. If I see that line, I'm going the opposite direction. Amen. Now, you can be a fool to keep walking out there right. and you start praying, Oh, Lord, please make this line a Christian. And the line begin to say, Lord, thank you for this food I'm about to receive to nourish my body. Yes, sir. See the big difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. Right. If I see the line, I'm going the other way. That's right. It's just the same as if I see the, uh, a rattlesnake. I'm not going to say, Thou shalt tread upon the line in the adder. I'm not going to try to walk on that rattlesnake and, and all of a sudden that thing strikes and bite me. And then I'm going to sit there and try to do like Paul when he was in the, uh, sitting around the fire. And all of a sudden, you know, a, a viper came out the fire and bit him. And the people sat there and watched him and nothing happened. So it, you cannot tempt God, people of God. Amen. It's a big difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. And what I'm trying to say, we have the emotion of fear. Meaning that if I see the snake, wait a minute. Oh, no. Let me back up. I'm not going to walk towards that snake. I'm not going to walk towards that line. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. That's the emotion of fear. There are things that we are to fear. Now understand to have the emotion of fear and versus just fearing God. There is a fear that we have when we have an all reverence respect for God. The Bible said fear the Lord. It says, for the, it says, for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then the Lord tells us, watch this, and watch this. Here's another fear. He said, fear not him who is able to destroy the body but cannot destroy the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul into hell. God is the only one can do that. So I don't worry about man. Because man do not have a heaven or hell to put me in. Right. I don't fear man. The scripture tells me in Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 5 and 6. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we can stand boldly and say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man should do unto me. You got to learn how to overcome the spirit of fear. Even this coronavirus. See, we cannot stop it. Not us. And as an individual. But as the people of God come together, begin to bombard heaven, Amen. 
According to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, the Lord said, he said, now watch it. He said, if I shut up heaven so there would be no rain, if I send the locusts to devour the crops, and if I send pestilence, which is a plague among my people, then in verse 14, he said, if my people who are called by my name shall so humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my faith. He said, then will I heal from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. People of God, we who are called by the name of the Lord, we just got to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, begin to pray, begin to seek the face of the Lord. So often we have sought the hand of God, always wanting him to give us something. But we need to seek his faith so we can get to know who he is. Amen. 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 You know, you try to identify somebody by their hand. Well, I know his hand was big. They were small. But if you look at a face, because see, you know, and I, I see this on TV. I, I never had to do this. When they always ask someone, when, they, when there was a crime that was committed or whatever, they say, can you describe the person? Well, he had long hair. He had a mustache. He had thick eyebrows. I mean, and his, his eyelashes was, was long. He didn't have no grill. He only had two teepas in his mouth. That's what they said in Alabama. He only had that two, those two teepas in his mouth. He had a beard. And you describe everything on his face. Because if you try to describe his hand, and you, they're not going to find anybody. But if you describe the face, then they can say, oh, now we got a description of who this person is. God is not a criminal. But understand this, people of God. When we seek his face, yeah. what we're saying, I, get, I want to know him. I want to know what, he, what he's like. I want to know who he is because I want to be just like him. You know, people out right here acting a fool and asking all these stupid questions, talking about what color God is, where God come from. Is he a black God? Is he a white God? Is he an Indian God? Is he a Korean God? I don't care what kind of God he is. Yes, you know, and it's like this. I'm just trying to get to where he's at. Amen. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to do. He can be green with, 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 with long hair. I don't care. As long as he's God, the creator, and then the only thing I'm trying to do to get where he's at. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, people of God, listen to me. We do not have to fear because perfect love casts out fear. And see, we got to understand the perfect love of God. If we understand the perfect love of God, we can understand that we don't have to fear anything. Amen. But let me go and look further. Like I told you, it's not the circumstance or situation um, that we're trying to control because you can't. You know, I think about, you know, my wife and I, we've been on several cruises, several cruises, and, and, and it's so fascinating just to be out there on that big old boat, that big old ocean liner, and then you see all the water all out there in the Atlantic Ocean, all around you, and see, and I realize it's the water that around us, it, but it can never ever cause the boat to sink. I know some of y'all said, what you mean? Understand this. It's not what's around us that caused the boat to sink. If you had a leak in the boat, that's what would cause the boat to sink. Yes. So what you need to do is find the leaks that's in your life yes. and get those things patched up. Because see, it's not the water around you that caused you to drown or caused the boat to sink. It's the leaks that we have in our lives. Maybe you have a leak of doubt. Maybe you don't trust God. Maybe, maybe you, you, you have the wrong motives about praying to God and seeking Him and asking for things. Maybe you are not operating in the spirit of forgiveness. Whatever it is, you need to get the leaks plugged up in your life. So that way what surrounds you won't come up in your life and cause you to drown. Come on, somebody. Well, I feel like Mr. Rogers, yes, I'm turning yes, down somebody's neighborhood. Yes, I'm pulling up in your driveway Come right on. now. I see you peeping out the window. Come on. I'm going to ring your doorbell to see you going to answer. Come on. If you don't answer, that's all right. I know I'm in the neighborhood. Yes, so understand this, people of God. It's not our emotions, Amen. nor the fear, or to allow the spirit of fear. See, we see if it's the spirit of fear, that's why... Paul told Timothy, he said, listen, God has not given you the spirit of fear. Oh, yes, sir. 
See, when you say it's just like this, it's sometimes I can tell people, I can tell when people come into church with the spirit on them. Come on. They sit there so nonchalant. They sit there acting like they've done you a favor by showing up. They sit there acting like, I, you know, you better be glad I'm here. Well, you better be glad God woke you up. Come on. Yeah. And they come in with this spirit on them. Right. And this thing is controlling them. Right. But it's another thing if a person come in with just emotional fear, just being afraid of the, the pastor. I don't know, you know, if I'm going to have some money, you know, doing, doing these hard times. See, I can understand that. I can understand the emotional fear. Now, let me show you how we're going to overcome that. We're going to overcome that through the word of God. Amen. We're going to be encouraged. And then we're going to see what we can do to help you through this time. This is when we need to come together as one to try to help one another through this time. Yes, because you can come in with a fear, an emotional fear, and we want to help you to overcome those fears. And the best way to overcome it is through God's word. To be encouraged to know that God is able to exceed and meet my needs according to what the scripture says. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, somewhere around verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. If I can think it, God can do above that. If I can ask him, he said, I can do more than that. And then sometimes we think that we done maxed out God's love. When we think we done maxed out God's love, God just reached down to show us more. Amen. Amen. Because, see, we got to understand, according to the Bible, or what the Bible tells me in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, it says, I recall to my mind, or I call to my remembrance, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. Amen. When you woke up this morning, you woke up with new mercies. Yes. You woke up with new compassion. His untelling love yes. never, never stopped. Never, never ceased. He said they are new every morning. Yes. So when you got up this morning, you got up with new mercies. Amen. And you know, that's all that the uh, Jehoshaphat and his people had to do. They didn't even have to fight the battle. And they, they, and the Bible said Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat feared. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat feared. But look what happened. He then after the prophet came and told Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, you don't have to fight this battle. All he needed was a word. Come on. He said, for the Lord is going to fight this battle for you. All the thing you need to do is appoint some singers. Let them go before you. And all they got to do is say, sing, praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. And that's all they did. They say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. It is of the Lord's mercies yes. that we are not consumed. Come on. His compassion faileth not. Just say, praise the Lord. His mercy endure forever. Amen. And when they sung that, and when they went out to battle, the Bible said those three armies, they fought against themselves until the last man died. Then the Bible said it took them three days to get all the spoils, the silver and the gold and the treasure that was amongst them. Three days. Man, that must have been a lot of stuff. And see, we trust God, and it's not so much trying to get the things, but we just need the king. We get the king, we know we can have all things. Amen. The scripture tells us in, in uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right. and all these things shall be added yeah. unto you. Amen. Amen. So what do you want? Just the things or the king? Amen. See, if you get, uh, just pursuing things, see, things are nothing but a pathetic pursuit. Because once you get it, you realize you didn't really need it, didn't even want it. And you know most of the time, and whenever you get things, what you do, especially when you go buy them, you leave the tag on them. And when you don't like it, you say, oh, I'm going to take it back. Go get my money back. But see, if you got the king, see, the king has all things. And you can get anything from the king as long as the motive right and the priorities are right. That's why I say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. 
So we talked about the emotion of fear for a minute, and we talked about the spirit of fear. The emotion of fear is something that we have, and we, we have that for a reason. Because there are some things that we need to be afraid of. If I see a car coming towards me, I'm going to be afraid of that car. I'm not going to say, oh, I got the boldness of God. No, I'm going to try my best to avoid it, even if I have to hit the ditch. I'm going to put on brakes. I'm going to do See, that's dealing with the emotions. But the spirit of fear is no, you'll be in your house. The minute you hear a little crack, you get scared. Oh. <laughs> I mean, somebody knock on your door, ring your doorbell. You think somebody trying to break in. That's the spirit of fear. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, Come on. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me get you to turn your Bibles with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. This is another familiar uh, story, a very good one that uh, I love reading all the time. And... Uh, one thing about this particular one is so much I have learned uh, from this, and this is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. We're going to start in verse 22. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 22. Let's see what the scripture says. And it says, And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So we know that there was a storm of wind that was already brewing in the, in the, uh, in the sea. Um, this, uh, um, there's a ship that the disciples, that they were on it, and this storm was going on. The wind was already contrary, as we see here. Verse 25, it says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Wow, this is something they never saw before. Now, they, they saw, they were with Jesus, Whenever he took them through the storm. And they thought that the storm was going to uh, take them out after Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. And when he did that, you know, he had to get up, rebuke the wind and speak to the sea and say, peace be, be, peace be still. You all know the story. And the Bible says there was a great, the, the wind ceased and there was a great, uh, a great calm. Now, I'm bringing this out because I'm going to continue reading here. And I'm bringing this out because what they feared the first time was the destruction of the winds and the, and the waves. But this time, they did not fear that. They feared Jesus walking on the water. And so it says and in verse 25 again, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out with fear. So they began to fear something that they haven't seen before. We've never seen anything like this walking on the sea. And they feared. They cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus said unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Jesus had to dissipate that fear that they had because they never saw this before. So he had to speak his word to them and say, be of good cheer. So whenever you are afraid, you got to hear the word to combat that, that spirit of fear that tried to come upon you and try to uh, linger and, and, and hang around you. You got to be able to overcome that spirit of fear. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. In verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. In other words, Peter was saying, Lord, if it is you, I hear your voice, but if it's you, command me to come unto thee on the water. In verse 29, and he said, come. This invitation was not only to Peter, it was for everybody who was on that ship. But Peter was the one who, who, who began to answer the call and he knew he had to, had to overcome his fear. And he began to overcome his fear. 
He either had to, he could have continued to be a, a, a boat hugger or either a water walker. So which one are you going to do? Keep hugging the boat? Or are you going to get out and say, I'm going to come out of my comfort zone and begin to walk on this water? Because it wasn't so much that he tried to walk on water and just try to do the impossible. He was just trying to get to Jesus. Amen. Now watch this. Notice this. Let me read this again, verse 28. And Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be, be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Peter was not to say, I want to walk on the water. He said, I want to come unto you on the water. The very thing that can fail me, I want to come unto you on the thing that I know that can fail me. But I want to come to you. If it's you, if you walk it, I can walk. If you're doing this impossible, I can do this. I can do the impossible. But it wasn't about me trying to do the impossible. I just want to get to you. So whatever you do in life, people, it might seem like it's an impossible task. Make sure you do it and try to get to Jesus. That's what we need to do. I need to get to Jesus. And then in verse 29, he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. See, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. First of all, he was afraid when he saw Jesus walking on the water. Now he sees the boisterous wind. The wind was already contracted. We read that early in the scripture. Now he saw the boisterous, the wind boisterous. He was afraid and began and beginning to sink he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? Wherefore didst thou doubt? At what point did you doubt, Peter? And listen, and I know we all have preached this, and I know you all have done eruditions of this uh, study. And I know we have a lot of erudite students out there. And yes, you listen to this and you viewing this. And you might come up with your own opinion, your own revelation, or your own understanding. But listen to me. One thing I understand that I see in the scripture. See, Peter feared something. When he saw the boisterous wind, he feared something. He feared the wind. But see, Peter wasn't afraid of, of, of just, just being out on the water. Because I'm quite sure Peter has saw uh, winds contrary many times being a fisherman. Amen. And I'm quite sure Peter being a fisherman, being around water, you better know how to swim. Yes. Right. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I, that, you know, that's one reason why I joined the army. Because I couldn't be a Marine. Uh, because I know I would have to know how to swim or be in the Navy. I would have to know how to swim because I'm going to be around water. And I know I have to know how to swim. But see, if you don't know how to swim, don't hang around water. Because there's that opportunity or either there's that chance you might fall off the boat or something might happen. you in the water and then you can't swim. But Peter got off the boat and began to walk on the water and go to Jesus. But look what happened. He saw the boisterous wind. Yes, he took his eyes off Jesus for a moment and the Bible said he began to sing but at that same time Peter probably was getting ready to turn around and go back to the boat because he thought the boat was much more safer than going to Jesus but just to show you how close he was to Jesus than he was to the boat because when he cried out and said Lord save me the Bible said immediately Jesus reached forth his hand and saved him That's right. but see but here's my point See, no matter what boisterous wind that may come up in your life, only thing Peter had to do was keep walking. Come on. Come on. That's all he really had to do. Only thing he had to do was just keep walking. If he had kept walking, he would have overcame his fear. He started by getting off the boat and began to walk on the water to go to Jesus. And But he started looking at everything else that took his focus off of what he was doing. And this is what happens in life. Now this coronavirus is, 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 is being 
uh, 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 mentioned so many times on TV. And if you watch the TV a whole lot, and you just hear coronavirus, people have died, coronavirus, people died. Now it's in this state, now it's all over the world, now it's affecting this place, it's affecting that place. If that's what you're hearing all the time, true enough, you're going to fear. That's why you need to overcome that fear by the word of God. When there was Jesus, when Jesus told Jesus to come, then his fear began to, he began to overcome that fear when he heard the word. Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith coming by hearing. Hearing is by the word of God. you got to hear the word of God. And you know what? Even though we watch TV, we stay at home, we watch TV. I hear that all the time. I say, y'all, let's watch a movie. Let's do something else. My wife had us at, at the house yesterday rolling coins. <laughs> Can you believe that all the coins we have accumulated over the years? I'm talking about from breaking the dollar. We had to roll. Uh, I mean, we had to separate pennies, uh, nickels, dimes, quarters. I mean, yeah, they're doing all kind of crazy stuff. But then we watch movies. You know why? Because I, I don't want to hear about the corona. I know the coronavirus is out there. I already know that. But I'm not going to fill my spirit with the fear of the coronavirus. When it is already known, the answer to this thing is God. I already know the answer. I already know the answer, but the more people hear it, it's just like, it just continued to breed fear. And fear began to spread along with this coronavirus. That's why you got to hear the word. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power. He gave us a spirit of power. And he told us, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8. A spirit of love. Because why? Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has tormented. He's not giving you a spirit of power. A spirit of might. I didn't give you a spirit of, 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 of intimidation. I gave you a spirit of love and a spirit of might. And notice this. You got the, that same genuine faith that's in your mother. That same genuine faith that's in your grandmother. Yes. And he was encouraging. It's in you. Amen. People of God, let me tell you. If you got that genuine, unfeigned faith in you, yes. you don't have the spirit of fear. Yes. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So only thing Peter had to do here in the scripture, even though the boisterous wind were there, they were already there while he was on the ship. That's right. But only thing he had to do really just keep walking. When you hear the boisterous wind, oh man, it might hit your house. Keep walking. Come on. Yeah. Keep doing what you've been doing. Oh man, you know, it's in the, it's in the CSRA now. Keep walking. Come on. Yes, sir. Don't get in fear. Keep walking. Trust God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Amen. Yes. Before I close out, I have much more to say. We never run out of message. We just run out of time. Yes, sir. Let me give you this right quickly. You know, we're talking about overcome, overcoming our fears. You know, in Psalms 91, 13, it said, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the feet. I'm going to give you this. This is a precursor to something else later in the future. One of the things I would lay Apostle Nate Holcomb had taught us, he taught us about the different fears. You know, we have the lion's fear, the serpent's fear, the dragon's fear. And, you know, we have all these different fears. But understand this, people of God. The lion's fear, that is the fear of what we hear. The roaring of the lion, the serpent fear, that is the fear of what we see. See, Peter saw the boisterous wind. That was a serpent fear. Then we have the dragon's fear. That is the fear of what is not there. See, fear grows from, see, watch this. It grows from a serpent to a dragon. See, Satan started off as a serpent in the, in the book of Genesis. But by the time we got to Revelation, yes. he became a, a dragon. Yes. Yes. And see, the song and parent of all fears is the fear of death. Say to God, we win either way. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is to gain. Let me give you this scripture here. And I want to close with this one particular scripture. Psalms 34 and 4. 
David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. People, we don't have to fear. All we have to do is have faith. Amen. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We don't have to fear. God just wants us to trust him. God wants us to have faith in him. God wants us to know he is our help. Our, he sees our ever-present help in time of need. Don't fear the one who can destroy the body. Because the body is going back to the dust of the ground. The spirit is going to the Lord. But our soul will be in eternal judgment. And what do you just want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Saints of God today, let me just encourage your heart. Keep walking. Overcome your fear by keep walking. Don't stop your lifestyle. And I'm saying, I'm not saying don't be concerned. Be concerned, but stay in faith. Amen. Stay in faith. Use the wisdom of God. And I tell you this, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Amen. And for those of you that are watching, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you never accepted Christ and you want to be saved and want to be sure of your salvation, pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you now confessing that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Son of God. I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, Lord, is Lord and He died, and he died on, the on the cross for my sins. For my sins. And, on day, and on the third day, God, God you, raised Jesus you raised Jesus from the dead, from the dead for my righteousness. For my righteousness. Jesus, Jesus, I do now. I, I confess you. I accept you and I receive you as my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Thank you for saving me and keeping my name in the book of life. And if you believe that, give him some praise. Give him some glory in the house of God. God bless you. We love you. And stay in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. It is all about him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.